This is the face of someone who does nuclear experiments in the garden. Introducing David Hahn, a 17-year-old boy who tried to build a nuclear reactor in the tool shed of his house. Welcome to Geopop, I'm Stefano Gandelli. Today I'll share one of the most fascinating stories from the world of nuclear power. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers. We are Italians. It was manually translated into English, but dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. Our story begins in 1976 in Michigan, but David had been passionate about chemistry ever since he was a child. They gave him a book about DIY experiments and he tried to do them all. Obviously in the 60s, safety standards were not exactly like today's, so some of the were experiments very dangerous, especially if it was a child that was doing them. So they used explosive substances, corrosive substances, and created a lot of damage at home. Imagine that at 14 he created nitroglycerin in his room. At 14 I think I played with Pokemon, I don't know. He created nitroglycerin. His mother Patricia, therefore, was afraid, rightly so, of losing the house in a fire in an explosion. And so what did she do? She thought about it and first, she enrolled him in the Boy Scouts so he could learn some manners. And second, she sent him to the tool shed in the garden to do his experiments so he wouldn't cause any trouble at home. Both turned out to be bad ideas. As for the tool shed, it was a terrible choice because David was alone and could do all the experiments he wanted to, even the most dangerous ones, without any kind of supervision. Regarding the scouts, the matter is a bit more complex. To be the best kind of scout, you have to earn activity badges. Do you remember the boy in Up who had all those badges attached to his uniform? He just needed one more and then he would have them all. Well, it was the same thing for David. He didn't have the nuclear energy badge. To get the nuclear energy badge, the boys were given a booklet in which it was explained what they needed to do to obtain it. It wasn't actually necessary for them to do anything special. Just study a little, answer a few questions, do a couple of experiments like making a DIY Geiger counter, and visit centers where x-rays were used. However, David, who was now 17, thought, oh guys, nuclear at my house, building a reactor in the garden would be a great idea, right? Something fun to do. Spoiler, it wasn't a good idea. The reactor that the radioactive Boy Scout wanted to build was what is known as a breeder reactor. Let's say it's a very complex type of reactor to build, and that to function, it requires mainly uranium, thorium, radium, and americium. At this point you may be wondering, but how did David manage to get all the information and all the radioactive materials he needed to build a reactor in the garden? Regarding the information, remember that they gave them a booklet, right? Which explained how to obtain the badge? Well, he contacted all the institutions, individuals and companies listed in the booklet, requesting information under a false name, posing as a high school teacher. As for the radioactive materials, the search was slightly more complicated. Of all the materials, thorium was the easiest to obtain. It was actually once used in miners' lamps, so he contacted a supplier, always using a false name and providing false information, and managed to purchase around a hundred of them. So from these he managed to extract the thorium he needed through a purification system based on lithium, which he obtained from car batteries he was able to buy. Yes, David also built a lithium-based purification system once again in his garden. So much was going on in the garden, he had to rack his brains a bit for the uranium as it's not found everywhere. He tried the local mines but couldn't find any. He bought it under the counter in a somewhat shady way but he couldn't buy enough. So, in the end, he had to use the thorium from the lamps. In fact, thorium, if hit by neutrons, can transform into uranium, which is the fuel he needed for the reactor. The americium, on the other hand, he got from smoke detectors. This time he didn't purchase them. He stole some from apartment buildings and some from the scout camp. While radium was used as a protective paint for old wall clocks. So he bought the clocks and once again had them shipped under a false name. So, after obtaining all the information and after acquiring all the materials, you might be wondering, did he succeed in completing the reactor, correct? No, he didn't succeed. And it's very lucky that he didn't succeed. Firstly, it didn't work. And secondly, it was starting to emit a bit too much radiation. So, since he didn't want to die, he decided to stop for the moment. So, is that the end of the story? Oh, no, it's not. Because now David starts having problems with the law. One evening, David, in fact, was near a car. 
A police patrol went by, mistook him for a thief, and took him to the police station. He was able to clear up the situation because the car was his, but being the genius he was, he let slip that there was radioactive material in the trunk. In spite of everything, he managed to explain away the problem by saying that it was material he needed for research. The police let him go, but they started keeping an eye on him. The FBI, the American Environmental Protection Agency, and the American Atomic Energy Agency were also alerted. Meanwhile, Mom Patricia was beginning to worry a little because she realized that David's experiments were not as safe as she had thought. So, she took all his stuff, bundled it up, and threw it in the trash. Highly radioactive stuff? Yes. Did she have scruples about it? No. She threw it away, no problem. Good job, Mom Patricia. To give you an idea, a few months later, the police actually went to search David's house to see if there were any other radioactive things. They discovered only what the mother had not thrown away. And even those few remaining items had a level of radioactivity at least a thousand times higher than normal. Some estimates even state that during David's experiments, a total of 40,000 individuals were exposed to radiation. This data should be taken with a grain of salt. There were never any real in-depth studies. However, it might give you an idea of how many people may have been, at least in part, contaminated by this crazy experiment. The final years were the most disastrous for David. After these nuclear adventures, David did, in fact, manage to graduate, but his girlfriend left him. His mother died by suicide and he became deeply depressed. He later chose to join the Navy and was assigned to a nuclear aircraft carrier. Given his history, they chose not to place him in the engine department. After military service, he began doing odd jobs, and in 2007, he was arrested for stealing smoke detectors. Why would he do that? To get the Marichum, he wanted to make another nuclear reactor. Here, this is the mugshot they took on this occasion. His face was disfigured by ulcers, and they were probably the result of a past nuclear experiment that went wrong. The radioactive Boy Scout is sentenced to 90 days of detention for the theft and dies on September 27th, 2016 at the age of 39. Cause of death? Radiation, you will say, it's obvious. No, it's not obvious. In fact, according to his father, radiation had nothing to do with it, and the cause of death was alcohol poisoning. Whether it's true or not, we will never know. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's something strange, a slightly different story, and if you know others like it, write about them in the comments. We'll see you in the next video, always here on Geopop, Everyday Science. Ciao!